This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. You're listening to the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast. And now, here's your host, Lisa Rangel. Welcome and hello. Welcome to the 46th episode of the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast. I'm Lisa Rangel, host of the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast and founder of Chameleon Resumes. We are an executive resume writing, LinkedIn profile development, and job search consultancy firm that helps executives and high potential leaders land their next position faster. And on today's podcast, we're going to cover how to clean up and polish your online image so you look like the in-demand executive or rising professional that you are. It doesn't matter if you're happy in your job or if you're actively looking for a job. All execs and professionals need to look how they want to be portrayed online in person. So it's not just important only when you're looking for a job. You need to do this when you're not looking for a job. Employers do check the social media presence of job applicants as well as existing employees, you know, at some point in the interview or the employment process. Some employers check upon stumbling onto your background when searching for talent on LinkedIn. Others, they look at your background online before they interview you. Others, as you're meeting new, if you start a job and you're meeting new coworkers, they're all going to pop your name into Google and LinkedIn and see what they find. So what would they see if they looked you up? So what would your coworkers see if they popped your name into Google or LinkedIn? What would they see? So no matter how formal or informal the potential employer social media policy is, you have to assume people are going to want to check you out online during the recruitment process or when they meet you after you start the new job. So whether you think it's fair or not, whether they should be looking at you online or not, it's not the issue. The bottom line is they do. (laughs) So Think about what you do when you're about to maybe go on a date with someone, right? This is a different way of thinking of it. Or if your adult child is about to date someone, say you've been married for a long time and you have kids, you're going to Google the person who they're dating, who you're dating. So the same thing happens in the workplace. So, you know, I say don't complain about it, just stay ahead of it. And I'm going to cover 11 tips here that will help you not only clean up your online image, but put forth a positive image that will leave employers wanting you on your team, or if you're already employed, keeping you, they're going to want to keep you on their team. So first, and I've mentioned it a couple of times, but just to make sure we cover the obvious step, you want to Google your name. So do a Google search on your name to simply see what comes up, right? This will help you come up with a game plan, not only to clean up your profile if needed, but how to proactively strategize on what to include, on different social media sites to improve your online image and set yourself apart in a professional manner. And also number two, I would search your name on other search engines other than Google, such as Bing or Yahoo. While search results in general should be consistent, the bottom line is they do vary sometimes. So double check and just make sure you're coming across as you want to be portrayed in these different search engines. Three, maintain a professional but appropriately fun Facebook profile. I generally advise for people to shut down their profile to be publicly viewed, but you may be in an industry, uh, marketing or consumer products, maybe B2C environment, where having a Facebook profile is part of your search and part of your online presence. So if you are going to be a person who has to keep it public and it does support your business life, mind the pictures that you post. Consider limiting tags by others to post pictures on your wall. And make sure your wall and photos are professional in nature and support the professional image that you're trying to portray. So take down the party pictures of you dancing on the bar or drinking heavily at a barbecue with your friends. From a positive standpoint, I would post professional or academic achievements. If you received an A on a professional certification exam or 100%, I would brag about it. Any athletic wins, say you just did a your personal best during a 5K, I would put that up. It shows healthy physical activity. If you've done or doing nonprofit initiatives, indicate what you've done. You say you, you just participated in your food pantry fundraiser last night. So post that and show that you're recruiting people. Indicate I participated in a local food fundraiser last night. Consider joining me at the next event. Show that you're trying to attract people to nonprofit initiatives. So those are all just positive impressions that you can leave. 
The fourth item on this checklist is to check your name in Google Images. This is a point that most people don't think of. They think of just Google, but I would then check Google Images. So here is what you'll see of pictures online of you if you're tagged or labeled. And obviously they all have to be having a public classification on the photo. So this way, if your friend is posting a picture and somehow labels your name with it, even if you're not tagged, if they have it as a public picture, it may come up in a public search. So I would just check and just make sure you have all that reviewed. Fifth tip on this list is to check your privacy settings on Facebook and every other online media channel that you may be on. So assume nothing you put on the web is ever private. That's my cardinal rule. And if you're in doubt, if you should put it up, then maybe you probably shouldn't do it. Number six, write a professional LinkedIn profile. That is optimized for your profession. And this way it'll improve your ability to be found by recruiters and land an interview. Now, it's not just the keyword optimization that's important. It's also the activity that you do on LinkedIn and how involved you are with groups and how you do a search for particular contacts and then reach out to those contacts directly. But 93% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find their next hire. So it's also important for you to be on there properly so you can be found. You need to be here. And if you want to learn how to set up your profile, you can go to my free cheat sheet. It's LinkedInProfileCheatSheet.com, where we show you how to set up the profile and how to write it and what are the key fields for optimizing your profile in the most effective way. Again, that's LinkedInProfileCheatSheet.com. Number seven, consider creating a Twitter account. And you can use it to follow target companies and network with contacts who can help lead you to your dream job. So you don't have to actually be active on Twitter if you don't want to, although it always helps to try to be more active and engage people in finding you. But even if you use your Twitter account simply to follow the decision makers and follow relevant key influencers or your companies, the target company pages, Twitter provides real-time data and it improves the content of your communication with key contacts. So I find that it's great to track companies and look for, you know, real time developments within organizations that then you can use. They make announcements. You're able to then use that information to maybe reach out to companies directly. Number eight, I would consider removing information from your profiles, all your profiles that reference topics that should not be part of a decision, a hiring decision. So for instance, topics such as religion, sexual orientation, marital status, disability, other groups that are protected by employment laws, I would consider removing this type of information from any social media profile that you have out there in public. So because it's discriminatory to ask for this data or use it in a hiring decision. It needs, anytime it's being asked for EEOC, compliance. It's always separate from the recruiting process. It's kept separate from the recruiting process by law and HR departments get audited for this. So but it's discriminatory to ask this information in an interview or use this information in a hiring decision. However, if the information is offered by the applicant willingly, if you tell somebody your religion or if you tell somebody your marital status or whether or not you have kids or again, sexual orientation, or if you have a disability that cannot be seen, right? Or you have an illness. People are human. Hiring managers are human. And if it's offered willingly, it unfortunately can be wrongly used. This information can be wrongly used in a hiring decision in a very unconscious manner. So by just not offering it, it just increases your chances of it not being used in the wrong way. So I always say keep that information out of public display. Number nine, share positively across all social media channels. So negative rants are major turnoffs to employers. Even if you're right, nobody wants to hire their next person complaining at the water cooler or nobody wants to hire their next problem. You have to know that when you rant on or if there is a rant, a negative rant on a particular social media channel that's viewed by potential employers, you have to know there's always two sides to every story and somewhere is in the middle and you're only displaying one side. So the key is to demonstrate your ability to communicate constructively. I wouldn't overshare in that way. Because again, it can be misconstrued because you don't know what the other side is to be diplomatic. The person reading it doesn't know what the other side of the story is. And most likely somewhere in the middle is where the truth lies because we're all human. So don't come across as like the Debbie Downer. Number 10, if you do have negative information about you online that you don't have control over where you, so you can't remove it. Another angle that can be negative is you maybe you share a name 
with a lifelong criminal, right? You're not the criminal, but the, there's a lifelong criminal that when you Google your name, somebody else is taking up your name real estate online. One option that you can do is you can create new content, write a blog, write online book reviews, create personal websites with your name in the URL and use other tactics such as these in which to then bury that information by creating new information that's tied to your name. And number 11, some people say I'm not on LinkedIn, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on these different social media channels. And I have to tell you that nowadays, not coming up anywhere online is almost as bad as having a negative online image. And that's number 11. Employers wonder if you are engaged in technology. They want to see what your background is. I find that to get online, you get hired typically. So especially if you're doing it the right way. So reconsider if you don't have a strong LinkedIn presence at the minimum, reconsider that, especially if you're struggling in your job search or you're struggling to get recognized. Maintaining a professional online image without losing your personality or your privacy is very doable. Take the time to craft the image that is true to you and resonates with the employers that you want to work for to land that next job and get that promotion. This will make everything you've done up to this point worth it. The bottom line is this, having an online presence is the new reality in today's world. Better to embrace it than to fight it. If you make it so hard for people to find you, it will have adverse effects on your career since other people that are at your level and in the same field will be easier to find. You're going to end up missing out because they're going to go to the people who are easier to find. That's just human nature. And while all of this sounds easy enough, I guarantee you not everybody will do it. Ask yourself, are you going to be able to execute these steps on your own? If you answered no, then consider hiring us for personal guidance on how to do this so you can elevate your career, maintain your current status. It's about being proactive in today's economy. That to me is the true job security. Go to executivejobsecurity.com and invest in our executive job security program to work with our team of career performance coaches who can show you how to maintain an effective online presence without taking a lot of time out of your day right? Minutes a day can help you do this. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. This way you also don't have to do it alone and you're still maximizing your efforts in maintaining and catapulting your career depending on what phase you're in. Our career coaching resource is found at executivejobsecurity.com and in past episodes we talked about the only way to truly protect yourself from job loss is to pretend you're fired today and make a list of the activities you would do to start finding your next job and then do it while you're still employed. This is the key element to the pretend you're fired today action list. I want you to be in demand when you need it. So create the demand before you need it. That's the key. This way, if your job situation changes unexpectedly, you already have pent up demand for what you do by doing these actions that I'm showing you here today and those in prior episodes. For the next few episodes, of the Pretend Your Fire Today podcast, we're going to continue to go through a list of tactics and activities to do now, as if you were let go today, to ensure that you are always employable and you are always ready for whatever the world brings your way. The first item on the Pretend Your Fire Today action list was doing your resume, and we cover that in episodes one through eight. So you're gonna to wanna to revisit that, get that foundation down. And then the second item on the list is updating your profile which you can review in episodes nine through 12. We also have the cheat sheets that I've mentioned before in prior episodes. The resume one is at resumecheatsheet.com and the LinkedIn profile cheat sheet is at the aptly named LinkedIn profile cheat sheet.com. <laughs> and in the last couple of dozen episodes or so, some of the topics we've covered are how to work with recruiters, how to answer the salary question on interviews and performance evaluations, Ways to create nine hours of job search time per week. I mean, could you imagine what you would do with nine extra hours a week? And also the ABCs of job security. I know you're going to want to go back to our, our menu and revisit those episodes and learn about more topics that we've been covering. And I'm so proud of you for taking these steps to making yourself marketable when you don't need it yet. Because I'm telling you, most people don't think it's going to happen to them. And they wait. For that unexpected, and then that unexpected job change happens, and then boom, they're scrambling to learn this information under pressure when they need to find the job. And to learn how to do this when you don't need it is such a gift to yourself. So kudos to you. This is what's going to help you stay employable because you're kind of working this system before you need it. It's key. My friend saved me with her priceless advice, pretend you're fired today, and I'm paying it forward with you. 
I ask you to pay this sentiment forward as well. Share this podcast with as many executives and rising professionals who you know you feel would benefit from this build the demand before you needed advice. Doing these steps suggested in this episode will help you clean up and polish your online image. And in the next episode, I'm going to discuss how to position yourself to shine during your next performance appraisal. This is going to be awesome. I want to help you while you're currently working to do better in your current job. You're not going to want to miss this episode. I want to help you position yourself for the raise or the promotion or both, right? You can have both. And in the interim, if you want personalized coaching with your career to get you past this one area or other areas that we've discussed in the past that you might be struggling with, go to executivejobsecurity.com and hire us to help you with these direct issues and let us help you create continuous employability in your career. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. Be well. This is the podcastfactory.com.